Is that the one that has the rubber on it? Yeah. Okay, good. We got the rubber on for extra okay, protection. Thank you. Ooh, that was something different, yeah. yeah. Awesome. That's cool, man. I like that. <laughs> oh. Well, I used to make fun of people making YouTube videos. I'm like, get a job, yeah, losers. Yeah. <laughs> and here I am. What's going on out there, YouTube land? Today, we are with the man, the myth, the legend, Shaw Strength, Brian Shaw, four-time world's strongest man. He's very tall, very big, full of muscle, full of grit, picks up heavy things, puts them down all, all the time, and probably one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet on top of that. So he invited us into his gym today. You guys will be able to see some of the shots here in a second. We're gonna do some body work on him, get some of these trigger points out. He's seen a couple of our videos, but I'm not sure he knows exactly what he's in for. He saw the BRH, Big Red Hammer. Yeah, it's here. It's here right here. So it's, it's big to me. I mean, there's several, <laughs> several, several of these. It doesn't seem so big to him. <laughs> several of these tools you're gonna to use. And I'm excited. I think this is gonna be interesting. I think it's gonna be, gonna be fun. And I'm, I'm pretty pumped up about it. Really, honestly, it's gonna be good. And I've been working out this week just to get ready for this. <laughs> we, can, we can tell, we can tell right here, look. You know, <laughs> so we were getting ready for some thumb stuff and some people challenge my thumb more than others. So, you know, if I'm working on a 100, 130 pound fighter, it's one thing, working on a 420 pound world's strongest man, completely different animal. So I'm amped and ready. You ready to roll? Let's do it. Let's go. So what's the, uh, what's the, the weight limit? I don't know. I'm gonna find out. We're gonna find out. Okay, I'm gonna try to stay to the edge. Go easy. Have you broken these before? I have. I have before, yes. Well, there it is. Yep. I think, oh, a little crack. Okay. I'll just try not to move too much. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we might get our wish. We might get through it. Yeah. So you were, you were telling me about like some of the things that usually get worked on and like what makes you travel to go get body work. With strongmen, you get beat up all the time. I mean, it's, it's always something different. For me, I tend to, my hips, normally my left hip more than my right, tends to get a little bit bound up. So I can feel that more. It's kind of been, I would say like an ongoing issue, but something that I've kind of dealt with. It's never debilitating, but I can just kind of tell when it's not moving correctly. Um, so that's one of the bigger things. And then of course, normal stuff like your shoulders and a little bit more of that. But knock on wood for me, I don't have a lot of major things. It's more of just general maintenance, right. you know, for the most part. I can kind of feel when I'm beat up and when I'm maybe a little bit overtrained, things like that. Sure. You're obviously a pretty cerebral guy for this game. So I think that's giving you a lot of advantages when it comes to taking care of your body and having I longevity think, too. I think if you want it, that's the word. That's the longevity word, right? And being able to stay in the game for a long time, you have to be smart when it comes to Training, but also with recovery you have to play that game and know when to back off and when to listen to your body a little bit more and if you don't learn that early on you're not gonna last very long that makes sense you gotta know when to hold them and know when to <laughs> fold them At the end yeah, of yeah. Time, <laughs> something like that that song right like that song with your hip so it, it's kind of always there but sometimes it gets bound up to the point where it's debilitating and getting in the way and that's when you travel out and you go to work is that typical for you yeah yeah i'll, you manage uh, I'll go out and get it adjusted or you know work with different people sure. on it just try to get it moving better for the most part and, and i can feel like i said i can i can kind of feel it when it's a little bit more beat up or kind of bound up and needs to be moved and released a little bit. Okay. And where do you feel that the most? Is it on the side, the back? Yeah, I would say it's more kind of on the side okay. here a little bit more. It probably kind of like the whole thing. Okay, so it almost feels like the glute meat like tightens up around that yes. sensation. Yes. Exactly. Yep. Okay. And then neck tension, headaches, you get any of that or? Not typically. But I can tell, like right now, for example, I could I could feel, you know, if we're just gonna go down the line, I can feel that my lats are a little bit tight, yeah. my shoulders are a little bit bound up. It's a good point to do this actually, because I've been really hitting my training harder. So I'm a little bit beat up, and so I'm sure you're gonna find plenty of fun things to play with. <laughs> I just figured you were that are gonna hurt. Game, right? Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Hey, where can I get one of these shirts? Uh, you can get it from shawstrength.com and I will get you one before you leave. There you go. Yeah. If you want one, <laughs> you can jump right in there. 100%, man. Not that I'm plugging merch this early in a video. No, right it's, I mean, I appreciate it. Thank you, yeah. <laughs> All right, go ahead and look straight down. Okay. So you're what, 6'8"? Six, 6'8". Eight? Six, eight. I'm probably a little bit under now that I've been carrying so much weight around for so many years. But uh, <laughs> at one point I was, so okay. I might be a little bit under, but close. And what are you weighing these days? I haven't jumped on a scale for a little while. It's like 4'10", four, four, maybe. You have to have a specific five. scale, I'm sure, right? Yes. I had to get a special scale. <laughs> the scale used to just say error. <laughs> so at that point I knew I needed something more and I got one that went up a little bit higher. So Yeah, that only used to happen to me when I tried to go to the ATM. You know? <laughs> That's not a good problem. With the no, no, it's not. 
You're a big guy, obviously you were probably really tall early on. What got you into lifting and strongman? What moved you away from, I don't know, basketball, or yeah, volleyball? Yeah, I played basketball growing up and that was my first love. My first passion was basketball. So started with that, played through high school and then played all four years of college as well with basketball. And then it was kind of a natural progression because I started lifting weights to get better at basketball. Are you a power forward? I, I ended up playing that. I played a little bit of center, a little bit of power forward, probably more power forward in, in college because I wasn't quite tall enough. But he had a lot you know, of power. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <I was laughs> the power was not lacking. The That's... power was there, folks. <laughs> so I loved lifting because it helped me to be more athletic, more explosive, and play basketball better. So that's kind of where I started with that. How old were you when you started lifting? Like I would say I kind of got started about 14 around there okay. and probably took it a little bit more serious like when I was 16, 17, where I was like consistently training all the time. And then from there, I just started researching how to eat better and recover a little bit better. You know, everything that I could of course pick up from magazines and whatever at that age. But you know, it just was a, it was a passion. I love the process of being able to go in and train and I could put the hard work in and then I would see the results and then I could keep that going. So that was something I really gravitated towards at that point in my life because you know as a big kid I, I was actually really big in high school almost 300 pounds wow. before I started lifting seriously and then I dropped a lot of weight I got a lot stronger and so maybe that is what made it click for me okay at the beginning more but once I got done playing basketball in college I really just got more into lifting and I needed a competitive outlet for me I'm, I'm just too super competitive mm. and so I needed something and you know, I kind of was like, hey, I watched Strongman when I was a kid. I really love watching World's Strongest Man. I don't know how to get into it. I don't know how to do it. But it seems like you can be competitive. You could lift weights and train hard. And it's a good thing. And it'll be fun because I get to go compete against somebody else. And so that's where I, that's where I got started with that. So I just did some research, entered a local contest here in Colorado. And I actually won my first contest right out of the gate and just got hooked from there and took off. So... So you were up at 2 a.m. watching ESPN2 back in the day. Yes. That's what we were watching, man. I, I used to watch, they would do marathons when I was in. On the Ocho. Yeah, something, yeah. whatever that channel was, but. Uh, ESPN News or. Yes. One of those. Yeah, it was, it was fun. Johannesburg. I, yes. <laughs> I used to watch that before I'd go to the gym, you know? Yes, me too, yeah. me too, man. Yeah, who is your favorite? Magnus. Oh, kind of in that mid 90s, right? Yeah. Because you and I are probably about the same yeah. age. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, it was always Magnus for Magnuson. And so yeah. it was fun to watch him win and compete. So I just got drawn into it. I've always been drawn to strength. Right. Just even from a young age, it was always kind of, hey, this is impressive. I want to try to pick up something bigger or move something more. And so there was something that drew me to that, but I was always fascinated by it. So and you just knew after your first one you won, you're like, hey, I think, I think I'm pretty good at this. Maybe it's it just was just keep pushing. <laughs> Yeah. I had so much fun, okay. you know? It was just like, man, I, I love the competitive part of this. Uh -huh. And so I get to go out there and get amped up and lift something and I can, you know, compare myself to the next guy. Hey, can you move it faster? Can you lift more? Can you do this better than me? And it's kind of a one-on-one -on -one type of thing where coming from a team sport like basketball, right. you won as a team, you lost as a team. Even if you necessarily felt like, hey, I went out and played well, I beat my guy that I was guarding or whatever. It was still, hey, the team lost, we lost. Whereas this, you can only look yourself in the mirror and say, hey, I need to do better. You can't blame anybody else. If you lose, you lose. So right. I love that about Strongman for sure. Makes sense. So out of the two like big muscle guys with basketball backgrounds, who would win in a one-on-one -on -one game right now between you and Phil Heath? So we, Phil Heath and I have only competed in basketball one time. <laughs> is this on camera somewhere? It, it is. Is that video? It was for a news channel here in Colorado. <laughs> okay. And it was a free throw contest and I won. Oh! I won. For sure. So got the dub. It's on YouTube somewhere, I think. All right, we're gonna go look it up after this. But it was not. It's not by a lot, but I'll take it, man, because it was a win. So there you go. A win is a win is a win is yeah. a win. They always say. Now I don't know actually playing. That would be, that would be a fun one. We'll have to do that at some. <laughs> that point. might be a video you guys need. Just right. No ACL tears. Or no. Yeah, that's the problem. Tears. <laughs> for both of us, yeah. for sure. You guys are both carrying a lot more weight now than you. you a were lot. Before. Yeah. Your brain's like, I know how to do this. And your body's like. Mm -hmm. See, that's the problem. I try to explain that to people. When you step on a basketball court, for me, it's like I'm still back in college, sure. right? So, oh, this is, it's gonna be really easy to jump up and 
dunk and do all this other stuff you right. know, that I used to do so easily. And now it's not that way because you're <laughs> not the same weight at all. You, so, can you still dunk? The last time I tried, I could, but it was it was, it felt horrible because right. it used to be so easy for me to do. <laughs> so it's like now it's like man, I could do it with one hand, you know. And it yeah. used to be like, oh, that's a joke, you know, so easy. Yeah. So. 430 pound man slam dunking? What? That's, <laughs> that's gotta be a Guinness World Record, I feel like, right? I mean, we should probably we should look, look into that. that. Look yeah, it up, right? <laughs> it's the heaviest person to slam dunk in ever, basketball. ever in history. Yeah. So what do we, what do we got? Let's, what do we got going there? Well, at least it has a, at least it has a rubber end on it. Yeah, absolutely. Right. So, yeah. I mean, it's way easier, safer. That's what I think. Yeah. Good yeah. answer here. I, I was worried for a second, but then I saw the rubber end and it's no problem. It's all right? about the rubbers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> protection. Yeah, protection. Yeah, exactly. See, he knows. Turn your head to the left all the way. Okay. I don't get it. And keep turning. And keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Yeah. Awesome. And then let's go to the right all the way. Keep turning. Keep going. And a little more. Perfect. Back to center. And now let's look up to the ceiling. Keep going. Keep going. A little further. A little further. That's right there. Keep going up. Keep going. Keep going. Perfect. Okay. Awesome. And then I'm going to have you push your head straight back. Okay. Like that. Yep. And a little more. Okay. Good, and back to center, and then go ahead and push straight back again. Okay. Keep going. Perfect. Okay. And go ahead and look straight up again. Yeah, it's less, definitely less bound up there. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's interesting. Just so one more right there. Okay. Push your neck straight back. Okay. Good. Now look up again. God, that's, that's cool, man. I like that. <laughs> it's not too shabby, yeah? No, yeah. Do one more, actually. Okay. Push straight back again, and then tilt your head back a little. Good, okay. Now look up again. Yeah. Wow. Got it. I like it. That's something else, that's cool. That's something a little different, huh? Yeah. <laughs> now we're gonna get into the fun stuff Let's here. get your sub scat first. So I'm gonna okay. have you go here, and then you're okay. gonna go in and out like that. Okay. So you go right there. So a lot of people on my channel who's probably know you from the TV show, right? So what was that like? Do they recruit you guys? And tell me about that whole process. The, the strongest man in history. It was an interesting process, actually. Yeah, we got contacted about that. And I get contacted about a lot of different things. So you kind of take it with a grain of salt. And you're sure. like, all right, what is this? What's the angle? And then they started telling me a little bit more about the history side of it. And I'm like, wow, this is really interesting because I love strength history. I'm a fan of it. Mm -hmm. And so having a show where you're getting to replicate these feats of strength is such a cool thing. Yeah. So for me, I was like, okay, this sounds cool. This is great. And then I didn't know initially who was all involved mm -hmm. because it's kind of like, hey, we're just talking to me first. And then I started to find out who was involved and I was like, all right, this is going to be fun, man. It's going to be entertaining. Yeah. So it was quite an experience. Now you guys are all boxing, right? <laughs> I have, I have not. I've not signed up for boxing. No, no, you're, no. You're not gonna get involved. No, I think I'm. I'm good with. I'm good with strongman, man. So, are we gonna see the Eddie Thor match eventually, or? <sighs> They need to do it. It's just after all the build up, I, they got to do it, right? I feel like it's been a build up after build up after build up, and so you know, I was hoping they would get it done here, and then uh, obviously Eddie got hurt there at the end, and so I, from the last I talked to him, everything's back on track, and he's good, huh? yeah. So I think next year, maybe March, April. Yeah, they spent a lot of time training for that. Oh, it's yeah. The build up has been a long time. Bring that a little back down. Yeah, and then I saw Rob call out Nick, and I was like, you know, I don't know if I that's know. fair, man. I feel like, I feel like Obers is try, tries to call out everybody. Did you, he just, called you out too? No. No? He's not, not no, that. No, he's like, yeah, no, no. Yeah, that's not, <laughs> it's not a good choice for him. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if he's just trying to draw attention or what, but I saw that with Nick. Yeah. yeah that was, what, six or eight months ago? Yeah, maybe? yeah, I mean, everybody's fighting so, these days, right? It's, I can't even keep up with it, to be fair. But Literally everybody. Literally, yeah. Although, I just saw they just pulled Riddick Bow off. He was gonna box Lamar Odom. Really? I yeah. didn't see that. Yeah. Wow, yeah. okay, it's yeah. interesting. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's weird. Yes, yeah, so, 
Yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it all but shakes out. Because Lamar Odo knocked out Aaron Carter. So now he's... God, you're keeping up with this way more Man, than I'll tell you what. Yeah, we yeah. got the Jake Paul. We got the... Everything. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. you name it. Holyfield come back. Tyson come back. It's interesting. There's yeah, been a lot of yeah. money fights. Cash yeah. grabs. Cash, or, cash you know. money fights. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah, whatever they are. Yeah, I was trying to figure out if there's somebody out there on the internet that I could beat up in a fight. I don't, I don't think I have somebody. <laughs> Shoot. I'm sure. Can I make money fighting somebody? Yes. Like, yeah. Well, no, I think Gregory Johnson would take me out with the ring there. I mean, maybe you you and I could. I, I know we just I, kind I of met each other, but. I don't want that smoke. No, you don't. Okay. I don't want the smoke. I'm just I'm just saying. I, I mean, if, I feel like we could turn this into a fun talking thing. You have your hammer, like I get this, or, you know, I'm gonna we, get, we I'm could gonna add get, weapons to the match I or something. I feel like he just wants to hurt me right now. <laughs> I, I mean, it's only because you're digging in my armpit or whatever, you know. It's, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. It's all good. Yeah. It's all good. Yeah, I've, I've mostly been a pacifist most of my life, you know, but I was like, I don't know. Like, there's got to be somebody out there that I can take on. Just, yeah. Comment below who you guys think I should box in a, there you go. <laughs> in a YouTuber versus TikToker or a YouTuber Who, whoever it boxing is. match. Who should I take on? Or it could be me. You could don't, comment don't, me don't too. Don't put yeah. his name in. Yeah. Put I mean, somebody if, else. Put yeah. somebody smaller and more docile. <laughs> <laughs> With a much lower serum testosterone, <laughs> and and a significantly lower uh, reach advantage. <laughs> I mean, my arms aren't that long, really. It, What's your reach advantage? Six eleven, seven foot. Probably close, but that's. I mean, that's not that big of an advantage. It'll be fine. I think mine's like five eight. <laughs> <laughs> Out of short arms. <laughs> So we'll hook right there. Okay. So, so what got you into doing YouTube? And obviously guys, we'll stick his channel below. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you jump over there. You can watch him eat 12,000 calories. You can watch him pick up giant rocks. <laughs> All you can watch him get stuff. thrown out of Planet Fitness with Juju Mufu. I this mean, there's a lot true. of entertaining content over there. <laughs> Thank you, man. Yeah. It's been interesting, actually. I've kind of tried to do stuff on YouTube since I think like 2008, maybe. Whoa. So I kind of started early and it was just like really, really primitive videos, like some grip stuff, you know, things like that, that I thought was cool. But of course the videos are not good. It's just like phone clip upload here, you know, whatever. And so it just kind of was something that I got interested in, again, from kind of like a feat of strength perspective. Sure. Just showing some cool things or things that I thought was cool. It, it was interesting. It was interesting. They're just kind of, you know, naturally progressed and tried to do different things. And then, yeah, just kind of grew from there over the years. And then I got a little bit more serious about it, trying to put out content and something, like I said, it's something that I've always kind of tried to do or been interested in. How did you get started? Accident. Was it? Yeah. Okay. If you guys don't know, I work in an MMA gym, Jackson Wink, and so we treat a lot of fighters. And there was a couple guys from Europe, and they were like, "Hey, will you film?" You know, they were filming, and they're like, "Crack my neck." So we did it. Put it up on IG. It had like six hundred thousand views or something. And we're like, "What's awesome. this?" Did it again, a million views. So we just uploaded the same clips to YouTube. It's like one point five million. We're like, wow. "Wait a second, there's something here." People want to watch other people get adjusted. Yeah, and yeah. Get hit with these awesome things. And so then, like, <laughs> I, I, I had never watched that on YouTube. I'm a YouTube consumer for sure. Yeah. But I had never gone in that direction, and so. Uh, I looked up this this guy in Houston, an older guy, Gregory Johnson. He's been okay. a chiropractor long enough been alive, and he had like 500,000 subs. And wow, I was like, this guy's onto something here. He's yeah. got his own customized tables now, and you know, that's amazing, man. Yeah, yeah. So it, I was. Well, like, it's okay, fun. Well, it's fun to watch. It's fun to watch your videos too, man. I, I will say that it's you know unique and interesting, and like the format of them is good. Yeah. Well, I used to make fun of people making YouTube videos. I'm like, get a job, yeah, losers. Yeah. <laughs> and here I am selling out. Yeah, yeah. Selling out. <laughs> this is what you need to do. You need to replicate these and you autograph they're, them. They're coming. They are. They're coming. Well, yeah. there you go. There you go. I love it. Awesome, man. Yeah. Well, there you go. And they're actually better than my own customized tools. They're primo primo. That's amazing. And they're not cheap either, so. That's perfect. Sorry, guys. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna get some for in here. Yeah, it'll be good. <laughs> Did this paint go with this pain pill? Yeah. <laughs> so, you, so you feel right there, yeah? Yes, I do. I do. Yep. So raise that right arm up all the way. Very good. And left side. A, a little sticky. Little hang up right yeah. there, right? Yeah. Just on the top part. There we go. Okay. Straight, yeah. Right. Right. Drop. Okay. I'm gonna go palm forward with it. Like this? Yep. And then okay. let it drop. Cool. All right. Go and raise that arm up again. Yeah, that's better. Feel more free? Yeah. No, it, it does, yeah. I kind of felt that, I would assume it's more bicep, like as I went forward and right. um, rotated a little bit. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna correct that bicep position a little okay. bit too. So good right there, same thing. Okay. 
Try to relax the shoulder in that position. Okay. You really want to just open up. Like okay. it's going to pull your shoulder down. Okay. There it goes. I'm going to pull. Okay. Pull. I'm going to clear that up. Yeah. Awesome. I'm going to try it again. Feels good. Better on the yeah. shoulder. Yeah. Sit here again. Okay. Got a little hang up right. Okay. And then lean that shoulder back towards me. Like that? Yeah. Okay. okay. Now take the arm back again. How about that? Yeah, that seemed to seem to loosen that up too. Yeah. yeah. So just getting that, that second rib forward a little bit and letting that shoulder blade open up. That creates space in the front too. Is that what you're on there? Is the second rib? Yeah, the second rib had right inside the scapula. Okay. So if you're a little bound up there, then the scapula can't turn quite as easily. Makes sense. Yeah, those feel pretty much the same there. Perfect. Really yeah. Good. All right, let me just check that bicep tendon while we got you here. So go palm out like that. Okay. okay. Resist me. Okay. And then this side. This one again. Feel like you're using other muscles a little here? A little bit. Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna take you there. What I want you to do is go in and out like that. I'm okay. gonna hook right there. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. So if you guys have been watching, this is the same one we found on uh, DDP. This was, Dallas is way worse than his, but okay. bicep tendon just slightly off. Six more. Okay. Got double thumb this. So when you're really into thumb stuff, strong bicep. Yeah. <laughs> One more. Good. Nice. Let's go out front again like that. There. Yeah, that's better. Yep. Try for to sure. Lock up. Yeah, you can feel. It's funny how you can feel that right there. That's a good, good yeah. spot. But um, and just tied up. Pretty common. So that that. The one head of the bicep will go a little bit lateral. So okay. what I'm doing is blocking it while you turn the arm out. Interesting. So I'm relatively moving the tendon back to the groove. Makes sense. And it's not out of the groove, it's just not. Not quite there, no. Right. It's yeah. not perfect. When they're out, they're out. Like your arm will just collapse. Sure. No, oh, that's that's awesome, man. Yeah, doesn't hurt anymore? No, not the same. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Really don't feel it like at all? Yeah. Like I feel it almost kind of like pop or release or whatever a couple times as we yeah. were starting. Yeah. No, no. No, Pumping that's great. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's way easier too. <laughs> yeah, you're not recruiting other, like obviously you're so strong yeah. and your delt can do the work and everything no, else can do I the work. I felt like that was more shoulder, upper back to hold it the first time, whereas this is just, it's, it's way easier. Yeah, yeah. Way easier. So now with that, reach the arm back up again and see if that, yeah. Yeah, helps too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. feel better though too. Oh, man. man. Ooh. Ooh. Tune up, baby. There we go. That's awesome. You know what they say, you could tune a shot, but you cannot tune a fish. <laughs> I've never heard that, but I'll I got a good laugh out of it. I'll, I'll take it. My you, wife's I, back there rolling her yeah. eyes. You know, you know what they say, right? Behind every great man, there's a woman. This is this rolling is, her eyes. Yes, yes, especially when they say <laughs> things like that. I prefer when she rolls her R's a little bit more personally than her eyes. <laughs> All right, let's yeah. put both hands right here. <laughs> it's so good. That's awesome. Yeah. This is gonna be a trick. Bring your elbows in all the way. Like that? Yeah, that's not gonna happen. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna hook you here then. Okay. Back up a little bit. Nope. Too big for that. That's okay. a first. That is a first. I've never Too been big. able to not get my arms locked in there. Too big for that. Wow. So I mean. Too big for osteopathic I'll, moves. I'll take that. I mean, that's a record, right? That is a world record, too. A world record. Get it. Look world it up. record. We just made one right now. How was that? That's never happened before. Never. Wow. And I've treated some big dudes. Yeah. I'll just. Biggest. I'll just take it. I'll just take that. I mean, the biggest, the biggest title. He's like, I'll I'm just going to take it. <laughs> and his shoulder mobility is great, too. So it's not that he's just stuck. Like, both of his arms are all the way up. He's just that big. That's what I'm talking about. I mean, yeah. I don't know if you're trying to compliment me, but I'll take it. So. Yeah. <laughs> it's holding. It's, it's holding. Hey. It's holding. Now we get into the fun stuff. All right. So let's try to raise that leg first. Okay. Just see where we're at on that one. Okay. Now other side now. 
Yeah, I mean, you can get to the same height, but you're laboring a little more with it right On now. this, yeah. Yeah. And does it feel like it comes out of there and then to there, is that? Yeah, now that you're touching it, it's, it's kind of that top part and then more lateral. So from like here to about there, yes. generally. Yep. So, he, so the guy you typically see gets it there and it drops it and that's what gives you the most benefit? I think so. I mean, it's just, that's gotta be the adjustment I think that helps the most okay. probably, but I'm open to whatever you wanna try now. Ooh. Let's raise that one up again. Okay. Okay, back down. I'll put one more thing. And one more right. Oh yeah. Left side again. Whew. Good. And right side. Pretty close actually. Oh. Alright, one more time. Yeah, that's you. I'm not um, torquing easier back. Yeah, I'm not having to work as hard to get there. Like I can move a little bit easier. But your glute max is engaging now. Is what it feels like. Yeah. Oh, a little bit harder. Yeah, that's. There it is. Now right. we're having fun. Do it one more time. <laughs> that should be good. That's that's good, man. Yeah. That's real good. I mean, it doesn't doesn't feel good, but if it's the effect is good, and that's Afterwards, what this all about. Good. Yeah. Become a little closer friends now, okay? Oh boy. Is that is that the one that has the rubber on it? Yeah. Okay, good. We got the rubber on for okay, extra good. protection. Thank you. Yeah. I'm hammering you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> you know, one more there. Up again. Cool. Yeah, not bad. And right side. Good. Just gonna get a little bit of rotation on it too. Okay. One more time on the left. Okay. Perfect. Gosh, that's so much easier. And on the right side. Yeah. Let's see if we go through the table on this mid back one. Okay. okay. Got some movement. One more here. Just the first one. Yeah, that was. Take a few steps left, first before. Yeah, that left hip was. Let's see how that hip feels. Mm -hmm. Oh man. Walking is easier. I like it. Okay. Oh, that's 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 good. Really good. Definitely a noticeable, noticeable difference just taking a few steps, which is great. Perfect. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I gotta relax. All right. <laughs> Think loosey goosey thoughts. Okay, here we go. Think dance moves like this. Lo All right. Oh perfect. yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, I, I probably oh. could do that really easy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, loosey goosey. Oof. There we go. Oof. Good. That was. So I felt that down to about here. That mid T spine, yeah. Yeah. That was unique. <laughs> that was that was something different. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Right down the center. Huh? But I feel like if anything, that's where I was. I was bound up probably a lot in that kind of mid to upper back yeah, yeah. area. So that's, I mean, yoke, completely, bar, everything's everything, everything right crushes right there. Yep. yep. So sometimes wow. like just the P to A stuff, isn't going to open vertically. Okay. Only a vertical movement will open up that's vertically. A, I mean, that's the first time I've ever had anything like that done, which is awesome. Yeah. There's not much left in the neck. I'm just going to create a little top spot. Okay. Bring it right there. Perfect. That's the same one on the side. Drop your right shoulder. There it was. Oh, that was good. That was good. All right, stand up, shake that out. Whew. <laughs> that was. Got the blood flowing? Yeah. I don't know if we, I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> Try not to break the table. I don't know if we need to hug after that or what, man. That was, that was something. Hug it out, guys. <laughs> hug it out, guys. Hug it out. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, that was crazy. I mean, it's just the, the feeling of that was very different. Yeah. Very, very different. But I feel like I was pretty bound up. You know, like the, the first adjustment when I was laying face down there. Where we couldn't get any of those. Yeah. So we got the yeah. first one in the mid T-spine. The upper T-spine yeah. wasn't going to move from Not, that position. Gosh, my, all of it feels like, so like I can breathe the most. So if you're going to your shoulder blades back, now it should feel like you're going you're gonna to be able to open more and get more power. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah, that's crazy. You can see right off the bat. Yeah, that's way, way, way more open. Yeah. Way more open.
I was trying to think before we started, okay, what am I feeling before? Because right. a lot of times it's important to remember, okay, well, my you know lats were tight there, my shoulders felt like they were more bound up, upper back, and then of course this hip, you know, that we were talking about, but man, that's yeah. just, that's unique, man. Yeah, I was like, I read better when I'm locked up there and they do that one to me, I'm like, oh yeah, yeah my, my T-spine opens more there. That's, that's, that's and, crazy, never in my life. And yeah. for me, like where I get stuck is if I'm trying to do like a shoulder press, whether it's hammer or whatever, and I'm jammed there, it tilts me this way ever so slightly. Okay. And now I can't get my humerus all the way under to get my delts and pecs where I want them, like even the sternal head. Yeah. So then, then there's impingement, right? There's a little bit of pinching Big there. Time. So obviously if I can get my elbows under and my shoulders back down, I've got way more power and strength. Easily, yeah. yeah. Well, you, I mean, the tendency is to get tight and everything moves forward. Right. Ever, especially as a lifter, I mean, that's something you see guys going to the gym that get really involved in bench pressing and, you know, essentially what training the muscles you see in the mirror, right? Sure. I've always tried to have that balance where it's front to back, doing a lot more back training, but even as hard as you try to balance things, it still gets bound up and you still get forward. And it's so important to open back up, but that's crazy. Yeah. Like right now for me to open up that much and just feel like I can move better is amazing. Yeah, that's yeah. great, man. Yeah, for me, it's like, I find that I need it maybe barring some sort of trauma every three months or so, I feel like I need that one. That's what I've found yeah. over the years. Yeah. You know, same with like my hip or whatever. It reaches like a crescendo and you're like, okay, now it's time, right? Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, if you really pay attention to your body and learn it that way, and that's whenever I got hurt in college, it was always that like, I might have an athletic trainer that didn't want me to go to a Cairo, which was confusing because yeah. I started going because the 49ers and the Cowboys and Emmett yeah. Smith, they were all going. And so in high school, I would go every three weeks during the season and get my hips taken care of. Yeah. And then I get to college and he's like, oh, no, we don't do that. And then I'm squatting heavy. I'm deadlifting. I'm power cleaning. And I could feel that I need it. Right. But I don't have a car. I'm off campus. Yeah. And then next thing I know, my pelvis is locked up or stuck on one side and I'm running sprints and then I blow a hamstring. And it's because my pelvis isn't I'm not putting the force equally on each leg because I'm jammed. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. I wonder. Yeah. I want it. I feel like we've come a long way. Yeah. since that time where things were looked down upon right. more. And I think things now, to a certain extent, are being accepted more yeah. for their value. Yeah. And like things like this are, I mean, it's it's awesome, man. I mean, well, yeah. you know, like in our practice, we have physical therapists, we have massage therapists, we have a couple of chiropractors, we have naperpaths. We have an ortho that comes in house to do injections when we need them. Every tool has its place to be used, right? Mm -hmm. So it's just finding the right person and the right tool for the right job in any situation. Like I said, I think the world of physical therapists and massage therapists therapists and and some chiros and you know when you're trying to fit the wrong tool for the wrong piece things Big don't time. go as well or when you're saying hey don't use the screwdriver and you're like but it's a screw they're like no no use the hammer yes well this time we might need the screwdriver and they're like no I'm just telling you the hammer works better yes. yeah for the nail yes you're right yeah yeah when did you first start using like those tools so just variations have changed over time and some of what we use is kind of a physiological switch from like the massage guns they're impact tools so they trick your neurological system and okay. thinking that the muscles like shorter than it is so the vibrational frequency it can allow you temporarily to move the muscle through a longer range of motion so sometimes we use it in that manner and then i met a medical doctor from holland through one of my fighters alistair overeem and apparently this particular motif was super popular in, in the netherlands Interesting. Um, sort of in the place of Kairos over there. So there's bone setters in every culture. Okay. They just might be osteopaths in some cultures in America. They're Kairos because it was born here. Yeah. You know, there's Indian barbers and people like that. So it's existed in every culture. Whether it's just the European sophistication or whatever, the medical doctors over there were using tools to give more linear approaches instead of just trying to twist your spine. And I think your Cairo already kind of does that with the blocks and the drops. They're more specific yeah. than just relaying you on your side and trying to twist you, right? Totally. Yeah. So in this case, you're giving impact in a very specific motion. So if I have a back slip like this and it needs to go forward, I need direct linear force that way. Interesting. Right? I can't just turn you on your side and make that change if I'm off. No, it makes complete sense. Yeah. Or on your yeah. shoulder, right? If your shoulder's yeah. up and forward. Absolutely. I don't want to jam your shoulder into your arm that way. I don't want to, no. you know, yeah. I want to get a little bit of motion that way. And then I'll check yeah. the muscle there too to see if the biceps right, if the supraspinatus is right, you know, all those other things. So, That's, um, man, I, I'm, I'm, I love it, man. I love it. Love it. You're a, a master at what you do for I sure. appreciate that. Yeah. Feeling good, yeah? I really am. Yeah. I, I feel, I feel just overall a lot better than when I was walking around, say, half an hour ago, nice. right before we started. And like I said, I've been a little beat up with training. I've been just kind of the typical kind of overuse stuff over tight, you know, and I, I can just kind of feel my body saying, hey, we're, we're doing all this. We need a little bit of adjustment, but that's amazing. That hip feels better. The 
definitely my shoulders have opened up and moving a lot better overall. You know, just walking, right? Like it's it's crazy the change and you know, I'm not I'm not just saying that either. It's like hopping up off the table and walking. You can tell how much things have opened up and are moving better. Right. It's just a unique kind of feeling. So Right. That's great, man. Yeah, yeah. Really, really good. And so for like my audience, if guys want to get involved in like strength sports, what would you recommend? Do you have a training program available? Like how would you tell them to get through the door and, and start in strongman or powerlifting? It can be tough. I mean, that's just the true answer. There's not a specific like here's the cut and dried path to get in the door. There are local contests that happen. And so that's kind of the, the best way to get your feet wet, so to speak, is kind of, you know, find a local contest, find a gym. There's a lot more gyms that are, that have have strongman type equipment now, which is awesome. Compared to when I started, right. there was maybe one place in Colorado if I drove an hour plus to get to it. So I had to pretty much kind of make my own equipment and find my own way to train. And there was nobody around here that was really training that much strongman. So I was learning how to do all of those things. So the path was a little bit different for me getting into it, but now it's it's much more accessible. There, there are things out there I do write a general program uh, that people can follow and that's just on I have a club that people can join so it's just club.shawstrength.com and it's just a general weekly template that people can follow and modify in different ways for themselves but yeah I try to give explanations on there I do a weekly kind of live Q&A and you know we have fun in there it's kind of like its own world that people can come in if they want to nice. uh, but there's a lot of stuff also accessible for people if they're interested and you know I'm always trying to put stuff out on Instagram Instagram and social media yeah. and through YouTube and different things like that if they're interested in training and you know that type of stuff so nice so make sure you guys go subscribe to his channel I'm gonna stick it in the link below go check out the website or I'm gonna send him after you you don't want a guy just <laughs> coming after you and I'll catch you guys on the next video